Hello and welcome. My name is Jaap Brascher and I'm a technical marketing engineer at Rubik. Today we will take a quick look at how to get started with the Rubik SDK for PowerShell. And as you can see, this project is open sourced and available on GitHub. And the first thing we'll do is we'll install the module on your system. So we do this by switching over to PowerShell. And in this case, it's Windows PowerShell, but this could also be PowerShell Core. We'll use the install module commandlet, we specify the name Rubik and the scope current user. We specify the current user scope, so we won't need administrative privileges to install this module. And after it's finished downloading, we will verify if the module is correctly installed. You can do this by using the get module commandlet. And we can see that the current latest version is installed 1.9.3. So the next step is actually connecting to our Rubik cluster, and we can do this using the connect-rubik commandlet. I will enter this command right now, and because I don't specify a server name, it will prompt me for this. So we'll enter the IP address of the Rubik cluster in here. And then the next step is our credentials. I enter in my username and password, and what will happen now We'll get a token back from the Rubik cluster and we'll use this token for authentication for all future commands we execute. Let's verify this connectivity by executing a command against the Rubik cluster. In the next command, we'll retrieve the version information of this cluster. And we do this by executing get Rubik version. And the results we will get back from that, we can see the version number, we can see the API version number, and we can also get back the cluster name. Now that we verified connectivity to the Rubik cluster, we can run any of the available commands against it. To get a list of all commandlets available, we can use the built-in PowerShell commandlet get command to get all available functions in the Rubik SDK for PowerShell. As this is quite a long list of uh, commands, we can also pipe this output into format wide to get a better overview of which commands are available in the PowerShell module. If you'd like to have more information about the PowerShell module, you can head over to the GitHub repository, and there we also have extended online documentation in our documentation page. And if you have any feedback or questions based on this video or the PowerShell module itself, you can leave a comment here or reach out to us on either GitHub or Twitter.